blew it up. They blew up the Parthenon. We're in Athens. We're steps away from the Acropolis. It's also our last day. So we stood here just a few days ago telling you that we wanted to go up here to the Acropolis, but we couldn't because we we're waiting for the prices to go down because low season starts November 1st and it's basically a half price ticket. So today is November 2nd. Today is the day we're going up there. We've been dancing around it for days now, so I'm really excited. Um, the only problem is it's about 11 a.m. right now. All the guidebooks are like, don't go between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. It's really crowded. You're gonna wait in line forever. So let's see what awaits us in the low season. We have a line. Moderate size line. This is the line to get tickets and then a smaller line to get in. I think it's better than what it normally is. And this is the side entrance. There's a main gate, which I think is supposed to be worse. Uh, we just got into the Acropolis and they took our microphone. As you can probably hear, the wind just picked up as I started recording. <sighs> Alright, such is luck. We just finished touring the Acropolis. It took away our microphone and it was very windy there, so we didn't want to record any audio. But let's just take you through it. I know the Parthenon is the main attraction, but the entrance to the Acropolis is absolutely astonishing. So you feel like you feel awe-inspired. The Propylia is a magnificent gateway to the Acropolis. You can imagine what it must have felt like walking up these steps thousands of years ago and be absolutely awe-inspired by the grandness here. Athena, the goddess of wisdom and warfare, was the patron goddess of Athens, so it's no surprise that several of the temples here were dedicated to Athena. For those that don't know, the Acropolis is the entire hilltop and consists of several temples, buildings, and theaters dotting the archaeological site. The Parthenon is the big building at the center of the Acropolis. You may be thinking that the Parthenon is decaying rapidly, and it's kind of true. Columns are missing and the pieces of the building are strewn about the entire area, but most of this destruction did not happen naturally. So a lot of that damage was, was actually caused in the 1600s because it was used to store gunpowder and they blew it up. They blew up the Parthenon. In 1687, under Ottoman rule, the Parthenon was used to store gunpowder. When the Venetians attacked, they fired at the Parthenon and the gunpowder exploded, literally blowing up the Parthenon. And then the British came in and stole yeah. the good pieces. I mean, we went to the British Museum before coming here and it's kind of crazy because like half of the sculptures are in that museum. Yeah. In the early 1800s, the Earl of Elgin removed about half of the surviving sculptures from the Parthenon, as well as sculptures from the Propylia and Erechtheum. Most of the Elgin marbles now reside at the British Museum, and there is an ongoing debate about whether they should be returned to Greece. The Erechtheum was a temple dedicated to both Athena and Poseidon and has perhaps one of the most famous porches of all time, the Porch of the Maidens. Six caryatids support the roof, however, these are not the originals. The originals have been moved to museums to protect them from deteriorating. Five of them are in the Acropolis Museum and the last one is in the British Museum. We did another Rick Steves audio guide, which I think is almost imperative to do this, like either get a guided tour or some kind of audio guide because 
they're impressive ruins but you just don't understand the context like you don't know what it is until you have someone really explaining it to you we also use this tour for several other things in Athens which is really helpful like in the archaeological museum so there is a big statue of Athena which no longer exists here at the Parthenon but it used to be here and in the archaeological museum they have a smaller replica of it and it really helped us to imagine yeah. where these three stones were that there was a 30-foot statue like that. Yeah. Now we're gonna go get a euro and we're gonna see if we can get into the Agora. This is like the best two euro fifty eat on the go meal ever. I'm surprised with how pretty Athens is good. There's so many uh, like restaurants and coffee shops and like little streets that you can walk down that are very pretty. Um, food has been excellent. I love it. I, I love Athens. I, I'm eager to come back here. We're at the ancient Agora and I'm starting to understand why this is one of the top sites to visit. This was like the center of the ancient world. Right now it's mostly rubble, so you really, really need a guide. You really need someone to, or something to be telling you what everything is. But wow, it, it's the entire city here. Yeah, this is what Manhattan is gonna look like in 2000 years. Yeah, the museum over here is kind of like reconstructed of what the shopping mall of the day used to look like. So that's kind of cool because you see styles of columns, the, the wooden beams on top, things that are just decayed already. They reconstructed it there. And I see a very impressive looking temple behind us as well. I'm curious yeah. to see what that is. Pretty cool. This temple resembles the Parthenon and is one of the best preserved Doric temples of the classical period. It's the most impressive building at the Agora, but it should not overshadow the history of the Agora itself. This is not only the main marketplace where ancient Athenians would have shopped. It was here that Socrates questioned marketers about the meaning of life. It was here that ancient Athenians cast their votes on public matters in the very first ever democracy. This was the center of the ancient world. finished our tour of Agora following Rick Steves guide of the Agora tour and I have to say that if it wasn't for Rick Steves guide it's just a bunch of ruins. It's not even ruins it's just rubble. Without context if you don't have the context and you don't want to get the context don't even go to the Agora. <laughs> don't even, it's, it's a waste of time. Kind of like a lot of it's like did you see that dilapidated like quarter of a column over there? That was the center of democracy <laughs> and you're like oh okay. Yeah. And there was also a line to get into the Agora. It wasn't as bad as the Acropolis, but just allow time to do the Acropolis and to do the Agora today. It took us about four hours, I would say. Yeah. And if you come after November 1st, the prices drop. It's the half weather, price. Yeah, the weather is excellent for touring. This is what we're at today so far. We're at 13,621 steps and 21 floors. That's 5.6 miles, and that's just from the four hours from touring those two places. So, yeah. like, you're you're going. Yeah. And now we're getting ready to go pack up our Airbnb, and then we're off to Crete. Yeah, on an overnight ferry, 12 and a half hours. 12 and a half hours on a ferry to Crete. Yeah, that'll be all in our detailed review. And if you enjoyed what you've seen, please, 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 please comment. Tell us how you feel about it. A like would be awesome, a subscription would be wonderful. The ideal situation would be all three, but... But we'll take any of the, any combination of those three. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for yes. watching. Thank you. Is it, are you gonna feed me, pet me, what's going on?
Also, we're sitting in the park outside of um, the Acropolis. There's a million nice. benches. It's really easy. A lot of benches everywhere. It's really yeah. nice. A lot of people yeah. offering us flowers. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, 